This is the Kia EV6 GT, and despite having almost 600 horsepower and a 0 to 62 time of three and a half seconds, it is not an electric super hatch in the same way as the Ionic 5N from Kia's sister brand Hyundai. No, as the name suggests, the EV6 GT is more of a grand tour. Think of it, if you like, as the Ionic 5N's more sensible sibling. In this Cargaroos UK review, we are going to get to know this intriguing EV. I'll check out its performance, see if it's fun to drive, and we'll do the sensible stuff too, like evaluating how much room it's got and what the range is like. So stick around, and while you're here, why not subscribe to the Cargaroos UK YouTube channel too? That way you won't miss any of our reviews or head-to-head -head tests. Now, with 577 horsepower and 740 newton meters of torque, this is the most powerful and the fastest production Kia there's ever been. It tops out at 162 miles per hour. And I know that Tesla has almost normalized these kind of extraordinary performance figures from relatively inconspicuous looking EVs, but it still shouldn't be dismissed, nor for that matter should the price. So you can get one of these for £63,000, just a bit under which, you know, it's a lot for a key, you could say, but for what you're getting, the performance in the package, it looks like remarkable value. Or if you're happy to get a, a one-year-old one with 10,000 miles on the clock, prices start at around 45,000 pounds. The value card is even more compelling when you remember the EV6 GT gets the same seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty as any other Kia. Another thing you might like about the GT is that it really doesn't shout about being the fastest model in the range, apart from having slightly different front and rear bumpers, there's not a great deal to tell this apart from other EV6s. Oh, apart, that is, from the neon brake calipers. These calipers grip uprated discs and sit behind 21-inch wheels that are wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber, all representing upgrades over a standard EV6. There are other changes going on under the skin too, and we'll come to those when we drive the car in a minute. But first, I just wanted a quick reminder of the practicality. It's actually unchanged over any all-wheel drive EV6, but it is worth having a look because this is a really practical car. So boot space, 480 litres. It's actually quite a high floor. It's not a very deep boot, but it is long, so you can fit a lot of stuff in an EV6. There is also a little bit of space under the floor as well, and if you want to drop the rear seats, it's as simple as pulling that and they go 60-40. Just like that. There's additional storage space in the front boot too. Although at only 20 litres, it's going to be tight even to store a cable. Right, rear space of the GT. Obviously lots of leg room here. This is set for me, I'm five foot 11 and well, I've got loads of knee room. It's actually quite tight to get my feet underneath the seat, but I could lift that up a bit if needed. Um, the downside is that because of the battery being under the floor, the floor is quite high. So your knees are up quite high in the back here. Less of a problem for kids, but worth noting. You can also adjust the backrest, which is a nice feature. Headroom, you can see, is very good. Um, you can get three across. This middle seat is quite wide, actually, but the backrest is very firm. So it's not going to be all that comfortable on long journeys. Um, but you do get a couple of USB ports there for charging devices. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think Grand Tourer, I'm not sure that neon green particularly springs to mind, and nor the fact that you have to adjust the seats manually. Um, but that side, I think this interior is really good. So these seats, um, as you can see, are sort of slightly bucket in their design. They're actually very comfortable, really supportive. Um, and I love as well the amount of storage that you get in the EV6, so cup holders, Great big storage bin under there, huge tray down here, big glove box, albeit with quite a flimsy um, flimsy lid, um, and lots of uh, charging and connectivity ports to connect your devices. Um, as we see with so many Kias, you get this twin 12.3 inch screen setup. This looks really smart, it's very easy to use. It's got CarPlay and Android Auto, although they're wired, not wireless. You get a wireless charging pad, but not wireless CarPlay or Auto, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and then you get this panel down here where you can control the ventilation and the audio systems. It's generally okay to use, it's a bit more fiddly because you have to switch between the two using this button here, but it's fine. And the screen, as we've seen with so many Kias, is really easy to operate, responds quickly, graphics are really sharp. So 577 horsepower, 740 newton meters of torque and what does that feel like 
Well, oh, <laughs> wow, yeah, feels pretty extraordinary, I'll tell you that. And that's just in the regular normal driving mode. We'll try GT in a minute. But first, how did Kia go about making the car this powerful? Well, it took the rear motor off a standard EV6 and it put it on the front, so that's 215 horsepower. It then fitted a new, bigger motor to the rear axle, so they're 362 horsepower motor. So what's that, some 60% more powerful than it already was. It then fitted uh, an e-diff on the back axle, so you can send 100% of torque to either rear wheel, whichever one's got the most grip. And that then, of course, allows it to do things like fit a drift mode, so you can, for example, um, send all the power to one wheel, initiate a drift. I will not be trying that on the public roads today. Of course, it's not only the motors that have changed for the GT, the front suspension has also been upgraded and there are uprated springs and adaptive dampers front and rear too. So the front springs in the GT are actually slightly softer than in a standard EV6 and the rear springs are slightly firmer and there's a, a stiffer anti-roll bar at the rear as well and the whole car rides 5mm lower. Now the idea of all these changes along with the adaptive dampers is to make the car corner a bit flatter and to ensure it doesn't squat under acceleration, so it, does, it just goes, and it doesn't dive too much under braking. Um, and all of that really is to make it feel like more of a performance model. Similarly, the steering has changed. So this has a variable ratio rack. It's 2.3 turns lock to lock versus 2.7 for the standard EV6. So it's supposed to feel a bit quicker. It is quite a quick steering. It turns in quite nicely. It's a bit oddly weighted on the self-centering. It really wants to pull itself back to the center. Um, some of that might be the lane assist. Kia is very good at just putting a button that allows you to turn that off. But even with that off, it does has quite a strong self-centering. Um, the main thing with the steering though is there's just no feel through it. And as a performance car, that's kind of what you miss slightly. But overall, um, the ride and handling are really, you know, they're, they're good. They're not like super exciting, but as a GT, they're good. You do feel the difference between the different suspension modes. Um, in GT, you get a little bing when you put in GT mode because it's so aggressive. Um, it can feel quite skittish, um, but in the uh, in the softer settings, it's actually fine. This being an EV, we should also mention charging and range. On the charging front, the EV6 GT gets an 800 volt system that, if you can find a powerful enough charger, will take you from a 10 to 80% charge in just 18 minutes. So as we've seen in other Kia electric cars, for the brake regen you get paddles on the steering wheel here where you can control the level of regen so pretty much off and you just get a nice coasting mode all the way through three different levels and then hold it down and you get an eye pedal mode which will actually bring the car to complete stop this is really easy to use it's a very clever way to set up your brake regen now in terms of range the ev6 gt uses the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery as other EV6s, but it cannot go as far on a full charge. The official range is 263 miles. Um, we've actually seen 220 miles on the uh, readout from a full charge, which is 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is what we see on the display as well. Now you could say that's pretty poor in terms of efficiency, but actually when you think about the performance of this car, well, it doesn't seem so bad. That, of course, assumes that you're not driving flat out in GT mode everywhere you go, although chances are you won't be. So a bit more on the drive mode. So as we said, we've got the GT button. That's kind of the full beans mode. Uh, you also, on the other side, you have a drive mode button and you can go between eco, normal and sport. You're probably going to drive in normal for a lot of time in your EV6 GT, I'd imagine, because, well, if you drive everywhere in GT mode, you're probably going to make yourself and certainly your passengers feel quite sick. What I like about this is that if you do GT mode and then you press it again, there's a My Drive mode. That's a fully configurable setting. You go into the screen and then you can have it. So, for example, you could have everything in the uh, sort of the full sport setting apart from the ESC. So you can have um, a bit more in terms of stability control. Or you could, for example, have the suspension in its firmer setting, but the motor in its less aggressive setting, whatever you want basically. And I think that is a really smart move on Kia's part because like I say, the GT mode is just, yeah, <laughs> almost a bit much for the road to be honest. 
So all in all, the EV6 GT nails its brief as a high-performance crossover designed for grand touring. It is, as mentioned in the intro, very much like the sensible sibling to the Ionic 5N. So how to sum up the EV6 GT then? Well, in many ways, I think it absolutely nails its brief of being that high-performance grand tourer, a high-performance electric crossover. I think the question is whether a high-performance electric crossover is really what you want. In some ways, if I want a high-performance car, I'm not sure a crossover is really what I'd be going for. And if I want a crossover, I don't know that I need it to be 3.5 seconds, 0 to 62. I don't know. The GT, it really encapsulates everything that can be brilliant about fast EVs because it, it can do everything. So it can waft around slowly, it's easy to drive around town, it's very smooth, but it can also go to full attack mode and go from 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds. And it is exciting, but I think it just lacks that tiny bit of magic that you get with a really good performance car. The thing that makes it feel exciting to be in at low speed as well as exciting to drive fast. And so for me, I think if I wanted a really exciting Kia Grand Tour, I'd probably buy a used Stinger GTS. And if I wanted a really good electric crossover, well, I'd probably buy a standard EV6 instead. It's a really good car, this. I just don't think it quite hits greatness. What do you think? Would you be swayed by the GT over a regular EV6? Be sure to let us know, and as ever, remember to head to cargurus.co.uk when it comes time to find your next car.